Word up! Josh Fosgreen here with lesson two of Fix Your Pentatonics. This is a free five-part series trying to get you to stop playing these lame... <laughs> this lame minor pentatonic crap. Um, and play some stuff that actually sounds good using the minor pentatonic scale. So again, you can download the free PDF right here. It has all the exercises that you'll need to follow along with. Today we'll be working with exercises five and six. So in lesson one, which I recommend you start there, you can click this link, I'll just put it wherever my finger is uh, to watch lesson one. Uh, in lesson one, we saw that we could solve the sequentiality problem that arises with these lame pentatonic licks by um, choosing larger than three note groupings. We played with doing four notes in our groups in lesson one as sixteenths and as triplets. Today we're gonna try groups of five notes. Ooh. Um, this has an automatic hipness to it because it takes a little bit more work and therefore is less commonly played um, because a lot of us aren't uh, happy with the number five. We don't like playing five note groups. We don't like playing uh, with five beats in a measure. Um, it's a more challenging number than four for those of us who grew up listening to music in four. Um, so that's actually a good thing because it means we can get some sounds that aren't just the cliched boring thing that we're used to hearing a million times over and over and over and over. So the first exercise we're going to do today, which is exercise five in the book, um, is sort of a response to, if you imagine an extended version of what I wrote um, in the booklet as problem lick one, like this. Like if we were to take expand that idea outward to a two octave range, this is just like that same concept for the lick, but instead we'll do groups of five notes. And we're actually gonna play them as 16th notes. Let me pause the groove here for a second. The reason we're gonna play them as 16th is because this is how you'd most commonly play them. People don't play pentuplets that often. It's something I recommend that you practice, but um, we're just gonna jump right in and play the 16th notes because it gives us that cool um, cross current of rhythm. We're playing five note groups um, as 16th, which is a four note rhythmic grouping. So we get a polyrhythmic movement of the accent pattern um, in like a four over five polyrhythm. Uh, 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 uh. Um, which is cool. It's automatic coolness. All you have to do is play the five note groups and you get like automatic polyrhythm coolness. So here's what exercise five sounds like. I'll just demonstrate once. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm just walking up the scale. If you look at the first note of each group of five notes, it's just A, C, D, E, G, A. And then I change the pattern a little bit at the end just to close it off on the root note. I'm gonna be a very, very nice teacher and let you play this along with me, uh, minus 20 BPM. So we'll go a little bit slower the first time around. Here we go, exercise five. Two, three, four. Let's do that again. Wait for the end of the phrase. One, two, three, four. Keep in mind that the tablature is just a suggestion. These are relatively advanced lessons, so I count on you to be able to come up with the fingerings that work for you. There's a lot of different ways, because you basically have to get from here to here, right? That's your lowest note, that's your highest note. So there's a number of different ways to get there. I don't think there's one that's better than the others, and I actually have to keep looking at the PDF and reminding myself of which one I wrote out, because there's a number of different patterns I would use here. Anyways, let's try playing this together at tempo, okay? Here we go, one, two, exercise five. Let's do it again, one, three, four. Nice. And then that, that bar in the interim is just the dance break, so do whatever dance move suits you. Um, okay, so that's exercise five. It's exactly like problem lick one, just extend it out a little bit and we're just doing five note groups instead of three note groups. 
and then we're going for sixteenths instead of triplets. Again, whatever your note grouping, whether it's three, four, five, six, whatever, you can put it in whatever rhythmic unit you want to, from eighths to triplets, sixteenths, pentuplets, um, sextuplets. That's something, um, I think I mentioned Jocko's solo on I Shot the Sheriff last time on off of um, Live in New York Volume 2. Um, there's some of that action in there. There's some groups of five as sextuplets, which um, is a really funky accent pattern the way it works out. Um, so you can get a lot of juice out of this. And um, something I want to make abundantly clear in this lesson series is that this is, this is just intended to give you um, the concepts. It's up to you to apply it to a bunch of different situations. Uh, we're just applying this in a very limited way to get you started. Okay, so exercise six is based on problem lick two, which if we were to extend out to a two octave range would sound like this. Oh God, or here's a six tablets. Uh, um, okay, so um, it's a problem lick. It's, it's a doodly doodly lick and guitar players think they're really cool when they do it. And then, uh, as a corollary, bass players think they're being really cool when they do it because they sound like guitar players and isn't that what we all want. Um, but no, we can play something cooler than that. And again, I'm just joking around here. If you like that lick, then it's cool. You can use it. I won't tell anybody. But if you're tired of stuff that sounds like that, you can avoid the sequentiality of that by using four or five note groups. So here's what it sounds like if we were to do this with a five note group. And just for fun and to make this work out in a two bar pattern, we're actually starting up on the third C instead of starting on the root. Okay, so here's what exercise six sounds like. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so it could be a little cooler, there's some other things we could tweak, but it's off to a good start because it's got that shifting accent pattern, so we're avoiding the rhythm cliche. Um, and we've also got the groups of five, which keeps us from having sequential uh, scale movement the whole time, right? Because we're going C, A, G, E, D. Next phrase starts on an A, so we get a perfect fifth. And then we go A, G, E, D, C. Then we jump to G, we get another perfect fifth. Another perfect fifth there, another perfect fifth there. Then we get a minor sixth there, that's cool. So um, there's a lot more interesting intervals when we break the sequentiality pattern. Again, because I'm a very nice teacher, uh, we're gonna play this together a little bit slowed down before we do the full tempo. Ready? Exercise six. Two, three, four. Let's do that one more time. This is the dance break. All right, here we go. Three, four. All right, here we go at tempo, exercise six. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, four. Let's do that one more time. One, two, trois, quatre. All okay, so what have we learned so far? Our problem licks have the problems of being totally sequential movement through the scale, which gives us a really boring pattern of major seconds and minor thirds over and over and over and over again, creates absolutely no tension, just sounds doodly noodly noodly, which has its uses if you're not stuck to it and using it in an unconscious way, we're trying to give you some more options here. And again, all this stuff about fix your pentatonics and don't be a lame-o and stuff, I'm just playing around. People can play however they want to. I'm just trying to give you some more options. Um, so sequentiality is one of the issues and the other issue is cliched rhythm, okay? Doing groups of three notes and triplets, which are rhythmic groups of three, we're not getting any interesting accents. You know, we could even take those problem licks. Uh, actually, let me just show you this real quick. Here's problem lick number two, but I'll play it as 16th notes instead of triplets. So, it, it, okay, it's still pretty lame, but it's a little bit less lame than the triplet version because there's a moving accent pattern in a, um, what would that be? It'd be like a four over three polyrhythm. Um, 
Okay, so cliched rhythm, sequentiality gives us cliched notes, which we don't want. That's what we've dealt with so far. In the next couple lessons, we'll look at another way to achieve non-sequentiality with your pentatonic licks, which I call flipping. And then in the final lesson, we'll talk a little bit about jumping outside of the pentatonic scale every now and then to get some more interesting note choices as well. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're enjoying these lessons. I hope that um, if I could get just one person to play like 10% less, I'd be happy uh, that I made these. So um, thank you for watching. Please share these with any guitar players you know. Um, this stuff all applies to the guitar and uh, there's some guitar players out there who could really use it. I, I know from experience. Um, if you would like to be a part of these lessons and help me keep uh, bringing them out to people for free, you can check out my Patreon page. You can support me there and get some cool rewards for doing that, and you also get to be part of these lessons being created, which I think is pretty cool. You can also buy my books. Uh, if you're having any trouble moving through the scales as quickly as we're going, I would really recommend that you get my book package, start with electric bass scales and arpeggios, work your way through that stuff, and then do the beastly scales and arpeggios, and you'll be shredding around in no time. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time, and we'll fix up those pentatonics some more.